Hello guys and gals, Buffalo here. Today we're looking at my Beretta Bobcat in 22 long rifle. This is a little pistol that's been on my radar for a long time. And I finally picked this one up about two weeks ago. I've just always appreciated how well made these are. And of course some of the features of this little gun make it quite unique. So finally picked one up. It's model 21A. Now the model 21 has been around since the mid 80s. And this stainless version, or Inox version they call it, has been out since about the year 2000. So this particular model that I'm holding in my hand has been out for over 20 years. So kind of a, kind of a shame I'm just now getting my hands on one, but better late than never. Just beautifully done little pistols. On this Inox model, the slide and the barrel are stainless steel. The frame is a anodized aluminum. Of course, it does have a steel trigger guard and other steel parts, but the only stainless steel parts are the slide and the barrel. The barrel is 2.4 inches long. The gun itself overall is 4.9 inches long and 3.7 inches tall and 1.1 inches wide. Just to give you an idea, a lot of you guys are familiar with the Ruger LCP. I've got a Ruger LCP here, but the, the size is very, very close on these pistols. The length, the height, you know, almost identical. The Bobcat is a little thicker, but other than that, they're almost the same size pistol. But that was just to give you an idea of the size of this pistol. And these are made in the USA, and the reason Breda started making these in the USA back in the mid-80s is just because it is too small of a pistol to meet the U.S. import requirements. Beautifully crafted little pistols, though. Of course, the big selling feature on these is that tip-up barrel. Pretty neat little feature. You just load your magazine up, insert your magazine, drop it around in the barrel, close it up, you're ready to fire. You don't have to rack the slide unless you just want to. You can rack the slide if you want to. Now, what I recommend if you do choose to rack the slide, I'm going to decock it. If you do rack the slide by hand, cock the hammer first. You'll find that it is so much easier. A lot of people talk about how hard these little slides are to rack, but that's only in double action. You can do it, but it's really stiff. If you've already got that hammer cocked, it's really super simple. But there's really no reason to rack the slide when loading these up. Like I said, you got that cool little tip up barrel so kind of negates the racking the slide part. Does have a frame mounted safety here that actually locks the slide and blocks the trigger from cocking the hammer. Or if the hammer's already cocked, it blocks the trigger from dropping the hammer. Some people will carry the pistol like this in a what they call a cocked and locked manner. The pistol's cocked, ready to fire, just take it off safety. Every shot will be in single action. Most people, myself included, if I were gonna carry this pistol, Right now I have no plans to carry this pistol. I've got too many other options. But if I ever got into a situation where I just could no longer rack a slide or uh, for whatever reason ended up carrying this pistol, I would carry it like this. First shot, double action. I would carry it safety off. First shot, double action. And then of course the slide is gonna reciprocate and each subsequent shot will be a single action shot with a, a much shorter trigger pull, much easier to shoot. Now your magazine release is down here. 
most of the time. I wouldn't consider that a good thing. But on these little small pistols, if that magazine were anywhere, or magazine release were anywhere else, there's a good chance I would press it while I'm shooting and drop my magazine. With it back here in this lower corner, there's no way I'm gonna, I'm gonna press that button by accident. It's meant to be used by your offhand. So when you're changing magazines, you just hit that, pull it out. One of the trade-offs of having a little tip-up barrel is, of course, you can't have an extractor sticking out into the barrel. So this gun does not have an extractor. It relies surely on the blowback of the cartridge being fired to expel the round that was just fired and to cycle the slide and to pick up the new round. And I pulled that uh, slide off again. That's another thing with no extractor if you do get a malfunction, you can't, just, just racking the slide is not going to do anything. There's, no, there's nothing grabbing the cartridge case. You're going to have to tip your barrel up and either pop it out with your fingernail, a pocket knife, or if it's really stuck, you're going to have to poke something down the barrel and knock it out that way. And while you've got the barrel up, fiddling with it, you have to be really careful because these are so, so easy to field strip you'll field strip it by accident. I mean, this thing, it's, it's so easy to pop that slide off. And here you can see just how well, I mean, these are machined beautifully. Got the little serrations there on both sides. As you can see, there is no extractor. But they're so easy to take apart, you do have to be careful if you've got that barrel if you've got that barrel tipped up and you're fiddling with it trying to clear a, mal a malfunction, you've got the, you know, say you've got five or six rounds left in the magazine, they're already pushing up on the slide. It doesn't take much to disassemble the gun. I mean, that's, that's a part right there. So to properly field strip it, let's start from scratch here. To properly field strip the gun, you would want to cock the hammer Make sure your magazine's removed. Tip the barrel up, pull it forward, push back and up on your slide, and then just pull it forward. That's your field strip. That's all there is to it. Now, you'll notice there's no recoil spring. So where's that at? See these two little grooves here on either side of the slide? They engage with your recoil spring you can see one sticking up here and one sticking up here. They're just hidden beneath the grips here. So that's how your recoil spring works. I could pull these grips off and show you, but I don't have a screwdriver down here with me. And typically on a field strip, this is about as far as you're gonna to need to go unless it's just really, really dirty and grimy and you wanna pull those grips off and clean some down in the frame. But very simple to take apart. Some say too simple because you can accidentally take this thing apart when you don't mean to. Looking at the sights on this pistol, you can see there's just not much there to look at. They're not sights that you're going to pick up real fast, especially in low light. But I have found that once I do pick them up, they're actually pretty easy to make hits with. The ergonomics of this pistol are pretty good. It feels good to shoot. It feels like a larger pistol than it is. The checkering on these grip panels is nice. You've got the serrated frame front and back. It's a good feeling, good shooting little pistol.
Now this safety is not a decocker. You can turn it on and off. It's, ju it's just a safety switch. It doesn't decock at all. If you do find yourself with the pistol cocked in one of the chamber and you need to decock this pistol, just put your fingers over the barrel, hit the tip up button. You don't want to let it fly forward and, and sling your round out. Now you can just manually decock it and you don't got to worry if the firing pin's going to hit the round or not because you've, you've effectively disengaged the chamber from the pistol. So there's your safest way to decock it if you find yourself with the gun cocked and you want to decock it. I'll try to show you this trigger. We'll put a snap cap in here. I didn't don't have my trigger scale down here with me, but on the double action, it's about eight pounds. And it's a long revolver like pull. And of course your slide's gonna reciprocate and cock the hammer on your subsequent shots and you're gonna go into single action mode, which is much lighter and shorter. Makes those shots in single action much easier to get on target. But I do recommend practicing with that first shot in double action so it doesn't throw you off if you ever had to use this pistol. As I said, that's, that's my preferred way that I would carry it. All right, guys, time to give my closing thoughts and uh, get this video brought down and brought to an end. So, Little Beretta Bobcat is a great little pistol as far as what I wanted it for, just a conversation piece to have in my collection, to get out when people come over and say, hey, look at this, you know how... It's just a neat little pistol. As far as carrying this for self-defense, personally, I don't carry a 22 long rifle for self-defense. If I'm carrying a 22 like this, it's as a backup, or I'm carrying it as a kit gun, or just as a camp gun, and I've always got a dedicated center fire self-defense pistol on me. That's just, that's just me. I'm not saying that's how you should be. That's just me. But I wanted to go over a few of the, the negatives of this pistol here at the end of the video. I hate to end the video on a sour note, but this thing had several negatives, and I thought I should cover them. It's very ammo picky. I had to try a few different kinds of ammo in it. I ended up running the CCI Tactical, runs it really good. Still had some malfunctions, but uh, that's what most of the video was shot with because uh, it wouldn't even run the Remington Golden Bullets. I couldn't get through a single uh, magazine with those. But most of the video was shot with the CCI Tactical, and as you can see, there were still a few malfunctions. Not a huge deal, but, and it's also still a new gun. I only have about 300 rounds through it, so it may loosen up over time and even get to running those better as well. But it is ammo finicky, and that can be a problem in today's time simply because I can't. I have ammo. I have a lot of 22 LR. I saw a lot of this stuff coming. I knew it was an election year coming up, so the last several years I've been stocked up. I've got a lot of different kinds of ammo I could try on this thing. But for the average person that maybe just picked this up and plan on using it for self-defense, it's going to be hard to find several different kinds of ammo to try in this thing and see what it likes. We don't live in a world where I can just go go down here to Jim Bob's gun shop, buy five different kinds of 22, bring it home, find what it likes, go back and buy a bunch more of that. We don't live in that world anymore. The only place I'm seeing 22 LR at all, I, I haven't seen any on store shelves. The only place I'm seeing it at all is just here and, uh, here and there it'll pop up online and then it's gone, you know, just like that. So it is ammo finicky, something to be aware of. I talked a little bit about it not having an extractor, so I'm not gonna dwell on that too much, but that's a deal breaker for me as far as a carry gun. It's gotta have an extractor. I had several, with those Remington Golden Bullets, I had several malfunctions that took a while to clear. I had one in particular that the brass stuck, the empty brass, I chipped my fingernail trying to get it out of there and couldn't get a good bite on it with my pocket knife. So I ended up taking a stick and ramrodding it out. It was the only way I could clear it. Had that been in a, a defensive situation, I'd have been in some major trouble. 
So needed to have an extractor. I've got some 22s that have extractors on the slide. And with those, if you get a piece of brass stuck in the chamber, a lot of times you can put pressure on that extractor and rack the slide and pull it out. That's not an option with this one. The magazine wheel, very flat, not beveled at all. So you have to be precise on those magazine changes. This only comes with one magazine, by the way. But if you do get a couple extra magazines, make sure you practice those mag changes because you have to be perfect in order to send that home. If you're the slightest bit off one way or the other, that flat, straight cut mag wheel is not gonna help you guide this magazine in. And the magazine doesn't help much either. A lot of your self-defense pistols will have a little bit of beveling on the mag wheel or they'll have some beveling on the magazine to where it gets more narrow at the top. And what that does, that allows you a little bit of guidance when you're inserting that magazine. Now, this one doesn't have it. Also, loading the magazine, these rounds tend to nosedive. The bullet will be pointing into the front of the magazine. So anytime you load this magazine, or what I've been doing after I get seven rounds in it, I'll give it a smack until they're laying, pointed kind of up like they're supposed to be. Otherwise, it's not going to feed that first round off the top of the magazine. This is a seven round magazine. It will hold eight rounds. However, don't do it. I've, I tried to put eight rounds in it a couple different times, and it will not feed that top round if you put eight rounds in this magazine. So that's just something to be aware of. But I think that's really... All I wanted to say, I hate to end the video with the negatives. I should, have saved, I should have saved the positives for the end instead of the negatives. But I did want to cover that stuff because it's a lot, a lot of times reviewers will cover the positives real well, but they'll kind of gloss over the negatives. And I think when it comes to firearms, you should, you should really hammer home those negatives. I know that's where the dislikes come from a lot of times on my videos. It's because I said something negative about a gun somebody owns. But I would rather say those things and let somebody who's thinking about buying one make their mind up fairly than to get it and buy it and get it home and say well that video i watched of buffaloes he, he never said nothing about this mag being so hard to load or he never said nothing about those malfunctions being so hard to clear so i like to mention all that stuff in my videos but that's all i've got today and i'll talk with you guys again soon